For the past few weeks, we have been using the DaVinci Resolve editor keyboard in the studio, and in this video, I'm gonna break down some of my thoughts on it. To start off with, you may be thinking, why do I need a specific keyboard to edit in DaVinci Resolve? And the answer is, you really don't. What this keyboard is going to do is allow you to very quickly learn the keystrokes that you need in DaVinci Resolve because it's got everything labeled out just here. And then it's also, once you've learned those keystrokes, going to give you additional functionality with the jog, shuttle, scroll wheel on the right-hand side, and then also uh, some of the dedicated keys on the left-hand side. Physically, this is a very solid keyboard. It's got a good weight to it. And the most obvious difference from a standard keyboard is that uh, jog wheel on the right. And incidentally, it's my favorite part of the whole thing. And this wheel, we're actually able to change the functionality. It's got buttons just there. And that means that when we switch between those different modes, the response and the feel of the wheel actually changes for those different functions. The outside of the wheel is rubberized, so that makes it very easy to grip if you wanna move it like that. And then there's a little indentation on top so you can get really um, precise control for scrubbing backwards and forwards through the footage. On the left-hand side of the keyboard, as I mentioned, you have a selection of keys which are dedicated to specific functions, such as marking in and out points, um, slipping footage, or doing trim points as well. And those can be used in combination with the shuttle wheel, and I'm gonna show you how that works in the cut page in a moment. So far, we've gone through all the obvious stuff, but why have Blackmagic come out with a dedicated keyboard? And my take on this is uh, that with DaVinci Resolve becoming a very fully featured editing package alongside the color correction, which already exists and everyone's familiar with, it's the next logical step for getting people comfortable with it, but also giving them that kind of control surface that they're used to with DaVinci Resolve so that they can have all the features at their fingers and move a little bit quicker. We're gonna delve now into some of the functions that I've talked about. So on this side, I'm gonna be using the keys that uh, allow me to do trimming. And on this side, I'm gonna be using the jog, shuttle, scroll wheel to move to the right point in the footage. We're in the cut page in Resolve, and I'm just gonna be moving through and seeing which shots I like the look of. So to start with, I can use scroll to really quickly move through these shots. If I find something that I quite like, I can be a bit more precise. I can go to jog and that's going to sort of increase the resolution. So the movements are finessed a little bit. I'm not moving so far with each revolution of that. So I'm just using that to find the point that I want. I think I might like this clip to start about there. And that that's looking pretty good. Now, supposing that I then wanted to finesse where that comes in because I don't want the brake lights to actually come on in this shot, I can go back over to the trim in, trim out, hold down trim out, and I can just pull that in with the jog wheel. So that's really cool. If you wanna keep the sequence uh, within the cut window, you can just use that to quickly and easily just pull that point until you get to just the right place where the brake lights don't come on, and it works great. Likewise, if I wanted to start that clip, say a little bit further on, I just hold the trim in and pull that into the point that I want it to start and then you can play it. Perfect, and that's what I wanted to see. So you're gonna find that when you're using this, you're able to move in a very different way. That's, that's not the kind of cutting that I'm used to doing in Premiere, for example. It's almost like an organic workflow then. You're holding two things, you're moving things. It's a more natural feel where before you'd just be cutting hard cuts and then dragging. It also means that um, you're able to move between the areas of the keyboard a lot more quickly. So just being able to change between jog and scroll and shuttle. Shuttle, incidentally, cover that quickly as I mentioned it, is a different thing. It's more like a fast forward. So you just twist it, it scrolls forward until you bring it back. So I think you can hear that. That's giving you a tactile feedback of how fast you're actually going. So it's like you're getting to the end of the transport. It's got a little bit of resistance and kickback as you do that, and then likewise in the other direction. And then when you get back to the center, you hit tick into the center as well. So that's just another way of doing it. Personally, I don't find I use that one so much. I'm more about the scroll and the jog, but uh, everyone's gonna find their own way of actually working with that. Now I've only used this on the cut window just there. And actually this was the first project that I really delved into the cut window because prior to this, I've been using the earlier version of DaVinci. So when we came onto the Aston Martin project, I thought now's a good point. I'm not um, under any time pressure at the start of this project. I'm gonna learn how the cut window works. And we just used it to bring all of the footage in together so we can skim through really quickly. It took me a little while to get used to it. It's a very strange experience, the cut window. It's rather like uh, what you'd find in Final Cut um, X, 
which I moved away from. I was a Final Cut uh, 7 user, moved on to Final Cut X, didn't like it, moved to Premiere. So having the cut window is a bit of a strange one. I almost instinctively zoom in and zoom out of sequences when I'm cutting. So it took me about 10, 15 minutes to stop trying to zoom in and zoom out because you can't do that because on the cut window, obviously you've got the whole timeline at the top and then you've got the close area of the timeline down here so you can see your precise edit points. It actually makes a lot of sense and it allows you to be really brutal about what you're doing with the cuts. You're just going through cut, 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 cut. You're not uh, having to move things. You're not having to think about tracks so much. You can if you want, but it's more focused on just cutting. The audio is hidden away under another layer. So it's there, but it's not, um, not in the interface as it stands. And that means that you're just focused on the edit. You can work a different way if you want. So at the top just here, you've got the source and timeline function. So if you were inclined to do so, you can come in and select your clips in the source view, scrub through those, mark your in and out points, and then bring those clips into the sequence. It's not the way that I've done it. I just wanted to look through all of the footage that we had and then make the cuts based on that. But again, it's all about how you're gonna use that. Being able to jump between the source and the timeline with those keystrokes keeps the interface uncluttered so you don't have a source viewer in there um, as standard, but you can quickly and easily hop between the two of them and then shuttle through, drag stuff down if that's the way that you wanna work with it. Coming into this, I wasn't sure that I would be a fan of the keyboard, but uh, having used it, I've actually got used to the more tactile mechanical feel and it's really grown on me, especially with that jog wheel just there. The keystroke labeling is definitely a plus and it helps coming across from other editing platforms. When I began editing in Resolve, I mapped the Premiere keystrokes that I was using, but I regret not just learning the Resolve keystrokes immediately. As you work in systems, you'll become very familiar, you'll get the muscle memory going. So this probably really only helps with the transition phase, but it's definitely a plus if you are transiting from a different platform. Having dedicated keys available for really specific edit functions is gonna speed up your workflow. And the fact that you can do something with a single keystroke and then also use the jog wheel to manipulate that. That makes it more reminiscent of the grading panels that we've seen from Blackmagic where you can manipulate multiple functions at once. And it's something which in the cut page has actually been really fun to use. It's a, a different way of approaching the edit where I'm just holding a button, scrubbing through to find an edit point and then letting go and everything just sits there. Whereas before we'd be using like mouse clicks, this is a little bit more organic feeling if you like. As I mentioned, the form factor of this means it's not gonna be slipping around on the desk. It's got a really nice premium solid feel to it, especially this matte area just here. Moving along to the Fairlight screen, when you're scrubbing through, the audio feels more like a tape machine and it's very nostalgic and it uh, has a really nice roll in, roll out. It's great when you're trying to find where you need to drop an edit point just to be able to scrub backwards and forwards like that. And it's something which I'm sure people are going to really enjoy using with this. So the big question, is it an absolutely essential purchase? No. Certainly, if you're using the free version of Resolve and you're just getting into editing on the platform, then the cost isn't gonna make sense for your usage. But as a production company, uh, it starts to make a lot more sense for us. We're moving lots of our editors. We've got six people who actually edit at the moment and we're moving them all over to Resolve gradually. I personally have been editing Resolve seriously for nearly a year now and Paola, our main editor, has just jumped over as well. So being able to bring these people over to Resolve, give them a keyboard which is gonna layer all the keystrokes and have them able to see instantly where things are, stuff that they're looking for, they're gonna be looking for the trim buttons, they're gonna be looking for in and out points, it's all there at their fingertips rather than having to dive into the menus to see where the keystrokes are or refer to a chart. We're consistently busy and need to streamline things as much as possible. The amount that this will speed up the learning process for someone coming across from a different platform like the Adobe Suite is worth it for us alone. But then factoring the broader ergonomic and functional improvements over a standard keyboard, I think that this is something that I'd really like to roll out across the whole team. The alternatives are overlay stickers, and yes, you can get little programmable keypads that you could set up to work like this, but in terms of our day-to-day -day operations, we just need something solid that's gonna work, plugs in with a single cable, doesn't cause any fuss, and will then just work day in, day out. It's all about the perceived value for what you're getting, and for us, time is a bit of a cliche, is money. We need to be able to edit quickly, we don't need people worrying about how they set things up, and we need people then to also be able to jump across to different machines. If someone's working in one of our edit pods, then they can be working on this keyboard. If they work in the grading suite, then they can just move into the grading suite and the keyboard's the same, it's set up the same, it's not a specific thing with a different keypad and everything, and more things to maintain. So in that sense, it actually makes um, everything a lot more palatable for us as an organization. 
On top of that, the speed improvements for actually working with the cut page that you get with the jog wheel and the keys just here is really fun. And being something which is supported directly by Blackmagic means that uh, when they're doing updates to Resolve, it's not suddenly gonna break all your keystrokes. They're gonna be testing it with it and they're gonna make sure that the product actually fits with the software Whereas if you're making up things yourself and getting a jog wheel yourself and trying to get a keypad yourself, you're going to constantly be in a cycle of making sure that your product works with the software. Whereas this should just integrate seamlessly as we found with the other grading panels. And that is really where the professionals start to see the worth of it. We don't want to be worrying about setups. We just want to be able to use it as a tool and you pay for your tools. And if it's a good tool, it'll be worth its weight in gold.